This is Twit. After seeing the details of another Chrome extension that was seriously compromising the privacy and security of more than 160,000 Chrome users, you know, stepping back from this, it feels as though we need a better solution than we have currently. And I don't know of what that would be, but, you know, we have a need for assuring what extensions are doing. Okay, so in this case, the extension was called, and, and, and okay, and it was a little sketchy to begin with, I guess, uh, getcookies.txt was, was actually the name of the extension. And it was being offered by, you know, through the official Chrome web store. Um, so it had been, it had been vetted and, and approved. It allowed users to export from Chrome the content of their cookie files in the old Netscape browser cookie format for presumably so that you had a copy of it, a record of it, you know, or for like Im, Im, maybe Im, importing it somewhere else. Okay, but concerns about the extension were brought to light, first of all, a couple of months ago in January when a Reddit user discovered that beyond just allowing people to export their cookies from Chrome and, and you know, you do that once, right, and then remove the extension. Well, apparently people weren't. Um, this Reddit user discovered that the extension was tracking users by collecting user and browser data and uploading it on the fly to a remote server. At the time, the Reddit user posted version 1.5.0 of the getcookies.txt extension is sending details of every page you visit, not just video sites, but every page, back to its developer at the domain ck.getcookiestext.com. He said specifically for every page you visit, it sends a unique ID for your browser installation, your browser's user agent string, which shows what OS you're using and the browser version number, your language setting, the platform you're on, the current date, time, uh, uh, and your current time zone, as well as the URL that, that you're visiting. So that's not good. The URL you're visiting with a unique ID tracking you, you know, by an extension that has no business whatsoever doing any of that. But then it later came to light that the after the version was changed, the extension was not only performing that bit of tracking that had been seen in January, I'm sorry, yeah, in January, but that it was also proactively sending entire user cookie files that you'd given it permission to acquire in the first place, sending the entire cookie files back to the extension's publisher. In an update to that Reddit user's initial posting last week, they wrote, the situation is now even worse. The extension is now also sending all your cookies to the developer too. When that was confirmed, getcookies.txt was immediately pulled from the store. But that wasn't until the extension's upgrade had been in place for some time, and many users, we don't know how many of the 160,000 who were using it, had obtained the update and probably had their entire cookie files, their, you know, all of their Chrome cookies sent to the extension's developer. You know, and of course, after all, what are we constant telling everyone they need to do? Stay current with all updates. So update to the latest getcookies.txt. And unfortunately, that, <laughs> that hurt you rather than helped you in this case. So, you know, as we know, anytime we either explicitly enable the keep me logged in on this machine checkbox or anytime a website chooses to do that for us, for whatever reason, you know, on our behalf, this logged on persistence, which is a convenience, you know, significantly since now we're using the web more and more for apps and things, um, that convenience is accomplished by causing the web browser to accept and store a long life persistent cookie in our browser's cache. That cookie identifies us to the site 
and has the effect of keeping us logged on when you know because in individual browser events are separate transactions the cookie accompanies each one of those queries to the to, to the site which says oh yeah that's steve again so anyway since this is exactly the data that the getcookies.txt extension was caught sending home to its publisher the publisher was obtaining the static session data needed to impersonate all of the users of its extension at any of the sites where a persistent session cookie may have been set, which is increasingly what's being done because, as I said, we're using browsers more and more as apps. And since the cookie file indicates its expiration date, if any, in the future, it's trivial for the attacker to determine where you're currently logged in that is to separate the cookies which are just session you know transient session cookies and persistent cookies you, being used to permanently log you in so for for what it's worth if by any chance you or someone you know uh as one of that extension's 160,000 users you should seriously consider taking the time to log out of any websites where you might where you know having some unknown bad guy logging in as you could be a problem if you just you know log yourself out that will render any of those stolen cookies that uh that, that may have been exfiltrated from you useless and this takes us back to the question i posed earlier like this is happening all the time you know variations on this theme how do we solve this sort of serious problem we want our benign browser extensions to be both powerful and capable, you know, otherwise they're not that much use to us. So they need to know how and be able to do dangerous things like have access to our browser global cookie cache. But how can we safely trust extensions from unknown authors, which might have a hidden agenda? You know, I mean, obviously we're putting some trust in the vetting process, which presumably occurred in order for this thing to originally get itself listed and even though it had a somewhat dubious purpose even day on day one the fact that it was then able to change what it did like it, it earned some transient trust for being there for a while it also earned 160,000 users and you might be thinking that the if the extensions developer was always you know, if their intention was always nefarious then they may have been well they may have well been biding their time waiting for the total user count to get up to a point where they would then incrementally change what this thing did in order to get additional information on their user base until they finally said okay it's time for us to cash out and grab everybody's cookie files and see what mischief we can get up to you know so today's browser ecosystem doesn't really provide any mechanism for deeply vetting an extensions operation you know i mean that would that would require more effort than is obviously being put in and and may be available for free extensions created by unknown people in who knows where um you know it would be prohibitively expensive to be able to fully examine every extension in detail and you know to, to do that you'd really have to provide source code which some extension authors you know might feel was putting a bit of a chill on the whole idea are they so, they're in javascript though aren't they uh or can they be bi a binary blob they they there there was some there was some requirement that was added after this became a real problem that the that the the extensions not be obfuscated right uh, like you know not not be uh, d uh, uh minimized in order to deliberately make them smaller and to cram out all all of the the text and they and they couldn't be encrypted but it's still you know i mean you'd have to like, you have to demonize it you'd have to know how to unobfuscate it and exactly just, yeah. and read through every line right. of this thing and 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 it's sort of clever too because i mean if this was always the guy's goal then he first came up with something that needed the permission to have access to the cookie cache and had a 
you know, a, a valid reason for wanting that. So that would have meant that there was all of this code in there that was, you know, Legit. reading and yeah. parsing and yeah. do, working with cookies. Right. So somebody who casually looked over the script would go, well, yeah, okay, it's doing cookie stuff. So fine. Right. right. You know, extensions are hazardous. I mean, that's what Tavis Ormandy was saying when he said, don't use right. your password extension. And now, of course, we know Bitwarden has an issue with its uh, extension uh, because right. it, it gets tricked by iframes. I, I suspect that's a problem with many ex, uh, password extensions. But right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's better so, to just use the app. Interesting problem, and yes, exactly. If you can, I mean, oh, but at the same time, look at all the look at and how you much cut and now paste, we're right? using, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which can be and, problematic. And also, look look at how much we're using our browsers. Right, for, we live for, in them. Like, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I I have a ton of browser extensions on, yeah, including uBlock Origin. We've talked about that. And, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I've got one I love. Uh, it's a uh, it's a session. It's a session save and restore for Firefox. I'll, I'll use it in order to to move all of my work in progress while I'm working on the podcast on 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 Monday here. I like save all of the tabs that I've got uh, in in a cute little JSON file and send it over to my other location where I'm able to to op to open essentially exactly the 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 same state that I was in before. I guess so, remove yeah. any extension you don't need and you're not sure of. Yep. And yep. That kind of and, thing. and here again, for example, are, is it would it have been those those users' persistent need to export their cookies? You know, it seems to me that's a one-time thing. I don't know why you would want to, right. but you know, install the extension, use it to export your cookies, and remove the extension. Yes, clearly, right. One hundred sixty thousand people just left it there because, oh, you know, it's not hurting me. Well, mm. except it was. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Enjoy elevating your IT skills with IT Pro from ACI Learning. Get exclusive access to practice labs, tests with real-world simulations, hands-on experience, and test preparation. Learn the way that works best for you. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to transform your talent with the best-in-class education from passionate experts. 